What's up guys? Thanks for joining me again here on the channel. I know it's been a while since I've uploaded any content, but uh, I like to edit my videos well and, you know, post accurate information. And so uh, I haven't had time to do any editing. That's what takes up most of the time. Actually filming these videos doesn't take as much time as you think, but the editing process seems to take me forever and I'm not that great at it. So, but thank you for coming back and seeing what we're doing here with the 2020 TRD Pro. Um, I posted a couple of videos uh, about some modifications that I did and some issues that I had with the Android Auto here. And so uh, I wanted to address that because, uh, you know, last time I didn't edit a video very well, I got a lot of uh, negative and funny feedback about the video I posted because I just basically filmed nonstop, posted it, and there was a lot of goof ups on the video and I made some mistakes and uh, I basically got roasted in the comments section. That bloody idiot! Oh, you idiot! You that bloated idiot! So, this time, any future videos I post, I like to take my time, edit them properly, make sure that I'm giving out proper information. So that leads me into why I'm posting this video. Um, and actually, thanks to the comments section again, uh, I've got some updated info on a couple of the mods that I did. So one of the mods that I did was replacing the um, factory JBL uh, subwoofer that's behind the passenger seat. And uh, it's behind the back seat. It's actually behind the back side driver's seat. Sorry, see, here I go again. <laughs> so when I posted a video, um, I talked about wiring the subwoofer and I actually wired it incorrectly. Uh, I, I looked at the wrong diagram uh, online before I wired that uh, subwoofer. You done messed up, A.A. Ron! So uh, I wanna post the correct information now. Um, I wanted to wire the subwoofer to be two ohms and I wound up wiring it to be 8 ohms. Now, quite honestly, guys, since I rewired the subwoofer, I had to take the whole back seat out, take the subwoofer out, change the wiring, um, add two straps instead of just the one singular strap. So basically you're wiring it in series instead of in parallel. And what that did was it changed the resistance of the subwoofer from 8 ohms to 2 ohms. So it's a dual voice coilover 4 ohm subwoofer. Um, I'll post the link down in the description, but I wired it incorrectly. Now, I gotta tell you, I rewired it and I don't notice a huge difference, uh, but it is wired correctly and so there won't be any damage to any of the other JBL factory components. Um, I am considering upgrading the entire system though. I, I will probably keep this head unit just because I like the factory look. It's decent, it's responsive, it does what I need. But the speaker system in here is just very lackluster. I don't love it. So I think I might be one of the next, that might be one of the next modifications that I do. Man, it's just a domino effect. Once you start replacing one component, it just leads to the next, to the next, to the next. And I really thought putting that JBL speaker in would make me happy. But uh, it, it did make the system sound better. And I could probably live with it the way it is, but you know how it goes. You spend more time in the vehicle, and then the next thing you know, you're wanting to do one more thing, one more thing, one more thing. And it's just this snowball effect, right? So let me show you guys now what I did wrong, and I'll show you the right way to do it. So let's cut to that now. All right, guys, so we're going to take a look at my last video where I made the mistake here, and we'll see what I did wrong. So as I play here, you're going to see that I'm going to show you that I'm going to bring one of the inputs in here to one side and split that and then just bridge that top to bottom, that positive and negative. And that is actually incorrect. So uh, here's the wiring diagram that I used. Now let me pull up uh, the proper diagram here. Okay, you can see this here is, this is what I did. And so this is incorrect. And if you look right next to this picture here, Crutchfield has all these uh, wiring diagrams. This is actually what is correct. And so what you're gonna do is 
have the negative bridge over to the negative, the positive bridge over to the positive. So you're just going to run that in. Uh, in. So just with a single subwoofer here, you can see that this is actually the correct way to do it. Now, my woofer doesn't have both the inputs right next to each other side by side, but this is a pretty simple way for you to see uh, the uh, the proper way to wire that subwoofer in. And actually, uh, here's a, uh, a video here um, online, and I'll put a link to this down uh, below in the description. Uh, this guy's got the best information on uh, on wiring up a uh, dual voice coil subwoofer. So uh, yeah, that was my mistake, and uh, thank you for pointing that out to me. So hopefully that was uh, useful information for you if you're considering doing that. Thank you for whoever commented um, and telling me that I actually did it incorrectly. I went back and looked and you were absolutely right. And I was devastated because I had to take the whole seat out and do all that again. But I went and did it. I didn't film it because the filming process just adds more time to, uh, to everything you do. I mean, there's a lot of guys that vlog and do that stuff all the time and they have the camera on them all the time. Man, I'm not used to that. So making these videos does take up a, quite a bit of time for me. And so I'm just trying to post useful info and just get to, you know, straight to the point, not a lot of BS. So hopefully that was helpful for you guys. The second video that I made was some issues I was having with the Android Auto system. Uh, I'll pull over here in a minute and um, we can try what somebody suggested. I have not tried it yet, so I don't know if it's going to work or not. I got a second camera with me here so I can film the dash. Uh, you guys are riding up stuck to the sunroof right now. How cool is that? Uh, <laughs> so I don't know what this view is going to look like. Hopefully it's helpful. I don't even know if I'm in the shot. Maybe you just see my hand moving around. The complaint that I had with the Android Auto is that when I had my phone connected, sometimes when I used the uh, search feature on the steering wheel, sometimes it used the Android Auto uh, Google Assistant, and sometimes it used the truck um, uh, built-in Toyota uh, search feature. And so somebody made a comment that if you hold down the button a few seconds longer, it will go to the Google Assistant. Whereas if you use the button and you just do a quick press it will use the truck so i'm actually pulling in right now to a parking lot here at these soccer fields by my house let me uh let me get the second camera set up and we'll try that out i want to see um if that works or not okay guys so i've got you on the second camera here i'm going to turn the music off um and we will go back here now i'm in android auto and i'm gonna turn the fan down too because i don't know if that affects the sound or not actually it's getting a little toasty up in here so here we are looking at the uh, default screen here so we'll go back here we're in menu and you can see i've got android auto connected so we'll just go there to android auto uh, you'll see what i've got there up on my uh, spotify so now let's try the uh, Google Assistant. So supposedly if you hold down the button for a long time, it'll, uh, it'll go to Google Assistant. So let's see what happens here. So I'm gonna hold it down for like, let's try three seconds. Where's the nearest tamale kitchen? Showing results for where's the nearest tamale kitchen. All right. So you guys obviously know I like Tamale Kitchen from my last video. And no, I don't go to Starbucks all the time. That was just the only thing I could think of <laughs> where it would have a lot of results. I actually don't even drink coffee. So I don't even go to Starbucks. I got a couple of comments from some people who were like, man, you go to Starbucks a lot. It's like, no, <laughs> I'm just trying to demonstrate the features on the system here. All right, so Tamale Kitchen, 14 minutes away. It used Google Assistant, awesome. Okay, so let's exit out of that. And now we'll just try a short press on here real quick and we'll see if it uses the truck or if it does do Google Assistant again. Let's do one quick click. Where is the nearest tamale kitchen? Where is the nearest smelly kitchen? Smelly kitchen. Smelly kitchen. Oh, I love it. <laughs> And I got it on camera. That was awesome. Okay, let's exit. 
Let's exit out of there. I don't want to go to the smelly kitchen. All right. So it looks like it works. So about let's try let's try a two second press on the button and see what that does. Okay, that uses Google Assistant. You can see it right there. So let's exit out. All right. So we exit out of that. So that looks like it works. So about a two second press on the on the steering wheel button here will go to Google Assistant versus a very quick just a poke so uh thank you for whoever commented on that i had no idea and i was probably just inadvertently holding the button down a little longer sometimes so whoever made that comment uh, i'll look it up and i'll see and i'll give you some credit here on the uh on the screen and, and uh thank you for that because i had no idea and there's just some uh tutorial videos online but they don't talk about the intricacies of things like that so thank you for pointing that out to me that is going to make my life a lot easier um for using google and knowing when to use the truck and when to use google thank you i appreciate that and now everybody that gets to watch this video now you know the difference too right so the information is spreading awesome that's what I love, and that's what I love the comments section for.